So this is part two in a video series to attempt to answer the question, what causes lymphedema? My name is Robert Erickson. I'm a lymphedema therapist, occupational therapist and life coach with self-care therapy. And I work with lymphatic lifestyle solutions. So I'm going to try to answer that question. And in this part two, we're going to focus on venous insufficiency. So what are some of the other causes? Uh, obesity can cause lymphedema. And I have a video on that. Uh, surgery, venous insufficiency, insulin resistance, and cancer treatment. Those are all things that can cause lymphedema. There are more, but those, those are the more common ones. So today we're going to explain how venous insufficiency can cause lymphedema. Uh, one of the most common things that we see in our clinic combined with obesity. So first, a quick recap on what is lymphedema in case this is the first time you're, you're watching one of my videos. So lymphedema, so we have a lymphatic system and the lymphatic system is what you see part of on this picture, the green, it transports fluid throughout our body. So if you stomp your foot and you have a swollen foot, it is the lymphatic system that has to move that fluid away from the foot, up through those green vessels, in through, through the system, and eventually into the blood, then through the kidneys to the bladder, and then we pee it out. So, so it is a very important system for, for removing uh, waste products that are in the body. It's kind of like a sewer system of the body. It has to be able to trans pick up fluid along with uh, proteins and waste products and dispose of it. So it helps keep us uh, healthy, you could say, and uh, keep swelling down. If you have swelling anywhere, it is the lymphatic system that's not able to keep up. So lymphedema is when the lymphatic system is not able to transport that fluid fast enough so you get a backed up system. That's the simplest way to explain what lymphedema is. So many different things can cause this uh, system to back up. One of those things is venous insufficiency. So, so uh, most people are familiar that we have arteries that pump uh, good oxygenated blood out into all our tissue, to our limbs, to give uh, our body what it needs as far as oxygen and nutrition and all those things. And then we have veins that connect with the arteries. That's the blood, you could say it's the blood that has been used and it's often depicted in blue. Uh, arteries are usually depicted in red. So, so that's the, the used up blood, you could say, that now needs to go back through the lungs and the heart and get oxygenated again and pick up nutrition along the way. So what happens if the veins are not working right? So the veins are supposed to pump the blood back up to, through the system. So if we use a leg as an example, it's pumping blood up the legs if we're standing up. Uh, as, as we age and for various different reasons, the veins can start to not function as well. A few things can happen. The valves, like you can see on this picture, the blood is supposed to be pumping up through the vein. Uh, and when the muscles that are on the picture contract and widen and, and thin and lengthen, that helps to put, to sort of pump that blood through the veins. Uh, the vein, the veins are also of course, pressurized by the heart that helps move the fluid. But as the vein starts to become more stretched out and relaxed and the valves are not working so good. So you can see the picture of the valves. They're supposed to, as that blood pumps through the system, the valves are supposed to close and keep it from going backwards. Uh, but as they get wore out, some blood goes up the leg, but then it sort of spills back through the valves and then it has to pump up and spill back. So it's like a step two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, and then it starts to back up. So that is then going to cause fluid to, or blood to kind of start to back up. It causes an increased pressure in the vein. Um, so that's called venous hypertension. Uh, so now we're going to get a little bit more technical. We're going to get down to a really microscopic level because this is uh, to understand how venous insufficiency causes lymphedema. You have to 
get down really, really, really small. So what you see in this picture, the, the sort of darker blue, bluer blood is the vein side. The red is, is the arterial side. And of course, they meet at some point, and that's called a capillary. This is where the exchange happens. So the good new blood comes through the artery, and it's going to deliver all its good stuff to the tissue, to wherever it is in your body. Uh, so that happens that happens here at this microscopic level. So you can see where where it shows an arrow out that there's there's stuff that goes out that's supposed to go out. Um, they have an arrow pointing back on this picture, but but more recent research have shown that there really isn't anything that goes back into the vein. So the vein basically just moves on whatever is left over after it has delivered its goods. You can think of it as a train that comes and delivers stuff. And now we've learned it actually doesn't pick up anything. It just, it just uh, moves on back to get reloaded at the lungs and the heart. So the green part here is the smallest part of the lymphatic system. It is, it is the very beginning of the lymphatic system. It's a lymphatic capillary. And, and if you can see on this picture, it has like little doors where those arrows are. Those are like little valves, flaps that can open up and pick up stuff. So now, after this exchange has happened, you have waste products uh, that, are, that are sort of the leftovers. They're the wrappers, so to speak, the, the banana peels. They're sitting there now in this what's called the interstitial space. It's like the nowhere land on a, on a microscopic level. This waste has to be removed, and the lymphatic system opens up its valves, picks up that stuff along with, with the water. You need water to be able to move that stuff, and, and the journey begins through the lymphatic system. So now, understanding that, we can now understand that if, if there is leakage from the veins, if the veins aren't moving as fast as they should, it's going to back up on the venous side. That means more fluid and stuff is going to be spilled into that interstitial space. That means more stuff is going to have to be picked up by the lymphatic system. It's going to increase the load, the workload on the lymphatic system. So I hope that makes change. So now here are the answers to the question. Why does venous insufficiency cause lymphedema? Well, so veins, here's the sequence. Veins are not pumping blood away from the limbs fast enough. That, uh, that causes more pressure, venous hypotension. So that means more fluid leaks out because of increased pressure. Also because uh, th there's, a there's a membrane that's supposed to keep that from happening and that can also become weakened um, and then it leaks even more. So leaky veins, high pressured veins puts more fluid for the lymphatic system to have to move. The lymphatic system can only move so many liters per hour, so it's going to have to work overtime. It's going to pull out all its resources and work, work, work to get rid of this fluid. And, the, and it can do that, but the lymphatic system, like all other systems, is not supposed to work at 100% of its capacity all the time. It needs time to recover, and the lymphatic system gets no recovery time. Like most systems in our body, if we stress it chronically with no time to recover, it's going to be, begin to take damage. So now it's sort of a downward spiral. Now we have a malfunctioning venous system, and that means an overburdened lymphatic system, and then the lymphatic system wears out. Now both systems are, are malfunctioning, and then it goes into full-blown lymphedema, which is like a chronic swelling. It's a swelling that just does not go away. So, we, uh, what can we do about it? I would say the three most important things we can do about this problem are compression, compression, and compression. So remember, a, a vein that's not working right has is bulg kind of bulging. It's, it's got too much pressure on the inside. So we can counter that by putting pressure on the outside. So in this picture, you have a compression sock and it shows how it sort of puts the vein back together and then everything functions better. 
you could make the exact same picture with the lymphatic system because the lymphatic system also have valves. So the cool thing is the same method that helps the lymphatic uh, venous system also helps the lymphatic system. So you put good compression on and that's going to help the lymphatic system. So that's, that's the most important sort of immediate way to, to work with it. So on a bigger picture, what do you do long-term? We think of it in three phases, and this is true for any lymphedema, no matter what the cause. Step one, treatment phase, treat with complete decongestive therapy to get the swelling down. The first goal is always get that swelling down because the swelling is damaging. Step two, we call maintenance phase. You want to learn to manage the swelling. If it's caused by venous insufficiency, the most important part is compression garments and also elevation. That means prop your feet up. But I say prop your feet up when you can. You want to continue to live your life. You don't want this to, to rule your life. Then the third, that's a long-term way to actually try to improve both your lymphatic system and your venous system. The health of these systems is through lifestyle change. Hugely important. If you are obese, losing weight can have a tremendous impact. The best nutrition is the ketogenic uh, lifestyle, low carb. Exercise is extremely important because we want that muscle pump to, to work on the veins and the lymphatics. Um, and that make then cause you to sleep better, which is also good. So that was a, that was a quick view of that. Remember, I talked about a downward, spir downward spiral, but I want to leave with an upward spiral. You start doing these things and you can actually begin to reverse the whole problem and, and, and long-term lifestyle is the best approach to actually improve the problem once you have managed your symptoms. I hope that was helpful. Uh, check out our website, selfcaretherapy.com, and also check out Lymphatic Lifestyle Solutions where we do, where we do online courses and online training in lifestyle, particularly, particularly for lymphedema. I'm working together with Leslie and Keith on that and hope to see you there.